Hi, I'm Ryan Szymanski, curator for Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. And today we got a video about uh, another tool, another piece of equipment that would have been carried on the ship that we haven't talked about before. It's one of those things that, uh, like so much else on this channel, that you see the results of it as you're going around the ship, but you never stop and think about how those got there. So we're going to be talking about this engraving machine and uh, how they make all of the signage around the ship. Unlike museum era where like I need a sign, I order something online and it shows up a couple of weeks later, go to a print shop or, or an engraver or something like that and, and just Google it and order it. That's not how it happens on the ship. And it's one of those things that I should have thought of knowing that the ship is self-sufficient in all of these other respects. Well, of course they're making their own signs. Because as we walk around the ship, you, you'll see dozens of signs that are super specific from the hours that the, uh, the, the paymaster hands out pay uh, during any given period to uh, at, at various workshops, don't come here for tools. Like they're, they're all over the place. And uh, of course they're just making those themselves. Why didn't I think of that? So first off, this is the museum's engraving machine. It has been here longer than I have. It is very clearly an old machine. Um, we don't know. There's no institutional memory left to tell us whether somebody early on in the museum bought this, got it donated from somewhere, or if it came to us with the ship. It, it could be the ship's original. It's like the right era. We just don't know. So uh, the reason we're making this video now is because we found this in a closet, like literally three or four doors away from my office. Like. It has been that close to me for the last seven years, and it's how much hidden stuff there is still on this ship. Anyway, uh, this machine, one, one of uh, my coworkers, Ken, who works on the encampment program and served on the ship in 1968 and 1969, got it working again because he can get anything working again. Um, and because he worked in the machine shop as an MR, machinery repairman, during the Vietnam War, uh, he was able to say that they had a machine sort of similar to this in the machine shop in the very back room where, where the tool issue part is. And uh, it, it was used for cutting signs. They could engrave uh, metal signs, like they're making a brass plaque. Like, uh, actually, I've got one here for one of our uh, volunteers. They could engrave brass plaques like this, because of course they're making plaques on board in the carpentry shop. Uh, actually, a combination now we know of the machine shop, the dental shop, and the carpentry shop. The, the carpentry shop is making the wooden plaques. The machine shop is making the, the actual brass plates that go on them. And the dental shop is using their uh, material to make the molds for the, the crests or medallions or things that are being put onto the plaques. So very much a, a, the whole crew coming together to do these things. Uh, and again, they're doing this on board. They're not sailing with a hundred pre-made plaques that they just hand out in, in various ports. Uh, so in addition to this, they would have bought the, the sheets of plastic and they had like a cutting machine to cut it down, and they had a uh, machine that would uh, bevel the edges down uh, smooth. You might be able to see it here for this uh, name tag blank. But uh, so, so it took three machines to make one of these plaques. The plastic that they're buying is uh, two color. So you got a color on top, you've got an, a, a contrasting color on the bottom. This one, it's light on top black below, this one black on top, gold below. So when you etch the top layer of plastic, you're removing the one color and revealing the color underneath. 
And, and that's pretty common for the signs on board. We have a lot that are red and white or black and white, things like that. So now that this is fixed, we can actually use it to make the things that we need. We've got, uh, it's a lot like the printing machines. So we got these things of uh, different types of font. We've got a, several stacks of them over here and those get slotted, slotted in here. Then you're using the arm of this to trace those letters out. And as I'm tracing this out, the cutting head, which is down here, is engraving the sign, which is right here. So what makes me think this might not be the original is that it is so small. Uh, and we've got some fairly good sized signs on here that just won't fit on this bed. So potentially, this is the original name tag maker, and then they had another one that was for the bigger signs. Uh, or potentially that this is something newer that the museum got. Ken remembers having one that was much larger in the machine shop when he was on board, but that was the 60s. We don't know what they had in the 80s. Um, yeah, so very simple. You're tracing here. It's cutting there. This is motorized. And then as you're tracing, you're just pushing down there to draw your shape. Now the fun fact is you do not need different sizes of font. You need different types of font if you want this like kind of scrolly S versus if you want like a more stencil S, but you can change the length of these arms to change the size of the font. So right now we've got the numbers on these arms cranked up, I think it's a five. And so that's making the letter significantly smaller than the one here. Whereas if we cranked it back down to a one, it would be a one-to-one, -one, this size letter would be engraved in the uh, nameplate that I'm making there. So what's another machine that the ship has that makes it self-sufficient? Let us know in the comment section down below. Something we haven't done a video about, we'll, we'll uh, make a video about it in the future. I love that we have those technical experts as volunteers and staff members on this ship, that when we find something like this laying around, it's like, what the heck is this? And we had somebody who could not only say, oh, I know what that is, but they could put all the pieces back together and make it function again. Last week, we showed you the dehumidifying machine that hasn't run since the 90s that we got working again. And here we've gotten this machine working again. Unfortunately, we don't have much uh, provenance on it. Uh, so it's hard to say exactly how old it is. Uh, maybe, maybe someone out there recognizes this and, and can let us know in the comments. But uh, Battleship New Jersey receives operating support from the New Jersey Department of State, also from a number of their businesses and private individuals like yourselves. We really appreciate your support it gives us the time to go out and find things like these and get them working again. You can also support us by liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people find about the museum and our channel. Thanks for watching.